Welcome to Chatting the Pictures. My name is Kara Finnegan, and I'm a writer, teacher, and historian of photography. And I'm Michael Shaw. I'm a writer, a psychologist, and also publisher of Reading the Pictures. It's looking more and more like Barack Obama's voting rights eulogy at John Lewis's memorial service marked the official kickoff of the 2020 presidential campaign. This photo was taken by Alyssa Pointer for the Atlanta Journal-Constitution via the Associated Press on July 30th, 2020. Here, Barack Obama acknowledges the crowd after addressing services for the late Representative John Lewis at the famed Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta. Obama's speech was as much a eulogy for Lewis as it was a warning and a call to action to protect voting rights in the upcoming national election. This image is really where you would expect Obama to be at this moment, isn't it? Honoring the contributions of patriots, tying past historic struggles to the struggles of the present, and then motivating people to think about the future. Calling this a voting rights eulogy, I think, is incredibly apt. Yeah, it's hard to overlook the political dimensions of the photograph. A picture like this is automatically going to prompt comparisons to Donald Trump. Obama is a dignified figure. Here he puts the focus on the other people in the church as opposed to on himself. You've got a pretty powerful contrast right off the bat. You know, I'm looking at that folded American flag behind him and the image of the altar in the pulpit of the church, and it seems as though he's got both the nation and God on his side of the photograph. Then there's other cues here. You look at Obama's gesture, and it has this quality of, let's rise up. There's really a feeling of activism here. You know, there's other elements that come to play just in terms of Obama's personality as he enters the election fray. Besides just being statuesque in this photograph, This evokes other scenes that are pretty familiar. The photo that Pete Souza took of Obama waving from the top of an airplane staircase where a rainbow seems to be just meeting his palm. Then there's the famous microphone drop. Obama's going to bring the full dimension of his popularity and his charisma to this campaign. This is really an image of Obama as elder statesman in a way that I think we saw really embodied in the eulogy itself, where Obama positioned himself as the inheritor of the civil rights legacy of John Lewis and many others who came before him. But at the same time, Obama also marks the stage where he, as the elder statesman, can give us our marching orders, if you will. Another visual analogy that I thought about was the famous George Washington Lansdowne portrait, which hangs in the White House. That is a portrait where George Washington is extending his hand again in a kind of gracious gesture and a kind of open gesture to the extent that Obama, as you said, is really in the full force of his authority as a former president. That is a kind of interesting link as well. The other thing we can't underplay is the setting for this speech and this funeral, Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta, where not only Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was pastor after 1960 until his assassination, but his father was pastor. And who is in the middle of this photograph, the woman in the background wearing the very pointed vote mask is Reverend Bernice King, Martin Luther King Jr.'s youngest daughter. So the setting of Ebenezer Baptist Church, even though it is literally they are in a different building. The whole area is a historic site. It is deeply tied to civil rights history. And so to speak there, to be giving the voting rights message that Obama gave in this eulogy is highly, highly symbolic. The photo is also really eloquent in terms of representing how much advocacy and faith intertwine in the African-American community. To see King's mask and to see such an overt statement of advocacy with the word vote. There's as much a demonstration of faith here. You see the cross in the pulpit, the pastor stole. We really see faith and politics intertwined here in a way that's really powerful. 